how do you see the gimbal world and the steady steady cam world? Like, what's what's your opinion from a from a proper steady cam operator? How how do you feel with the steady cam or uh, the the gimbal? Uh, I guess industry booming. Yeah. Um, can, can we go through a little bit of the history of of uh, please like the whole thing? I would love to. Um, so steady cam was invented in the late seventies, and back then the cameras were incredibly heavy. And um, it was basically like the, in the movie Rocky, there were a couple of movies that came out around the same time that, had, that it featured like the quote unquote first city cam shots. But the most memorable of the early shows was Rocky running up the stairs in Philadelphia, his, his triumphant uh, training, getting ready to, uh, to box right. uh, championships. And um, yeah, the, it was just like it, it kind of had to be designed a certain way for that time period. And then it basically, Steadicam really did not evolve very much uh, for almost 30 years. It's basically, you know, very similar to the original design. And then we hit when cameras started getting smaller and smaller and lighter. Uh, and then the electronic gimbals. Um, I remember seeing the Zen Muse, which was one of the first DJI gimbals and it was just you know they were mounting like small cameras like micro four thirds cameras right. um to the gimbals and then mounting them to the uh drones and i was so fascinated with that and immediately i started thinking uh about different ways to use that tool because most people know me as a steady cam operator but they don't realize that i'm i've been a director of photography for 27 years and i've been in a steady cam operator for about 12 now mm. um steady cam just sort of like landed in my lap and maybe we can talk about that a little bit later but the whole thing with the gimbal um i was really happy to see that technology come out because i'm pro anything that pushes the medium anything that pushes um our ability as storytellers to tell a story and then i saw uh that the gimbals had come off the drones and were now being used in a handheld application i got worried mm. Honestly, when it first came out and drones, I mean, uh, gimbals definitely dug into the steady cam market at first. Uh, and I was happy that the technology was there, but I was a little bit concerned about how it was going to affect my income. Um, so I started gimbal teching uh, with a movie. Did you? And I, I've, I've, I actually really love what the gimbal is and how easy and efficient it is to use. Um, touching on what you said, like, you know, what are some of the differences? Um, with a gimbal, you really, you, you're, if you're a single person operator, you're more or less at the mercy of uh, how quickly the gimbal can react to what you want to do versus like, uh, let's say if you're doing narrative work or even if you're doing like, uh, uh, like a music video, like a hip hop video dancing choreography you kind of you can kind of learn the moves and you can anticipate when to like you know turn it so that it uh, reacts at the right time but you have to know in advance because hmm. there's a delay right with steady cam everything's just absolutely instantaneous it's also very difficult to put the bigger uh cam the alexa the alexa lf um putting those cameras on a gimbal is um you got to have a, like a you gotta have basically as much gear on your body to run the bigger cameras for long takes as you would if you were just running steady cam in the first place. Right. The gimbal versus steady cam thing, it's like they're just they're very different tools. Mm. And um there's there is some overlap between the two, you know, methods of camera stabilization. Uh I I'm not gonna say like one is better than the other. I just feel like they're different tools that need to be used for different purposes. Right. Um as it turns out. Uh, there was a brief time when I was losing jobs to gimbals, but then I think that producers, directors, and DPs, and even gimbal operators started to realize that there is a very, like, a, a different approach, and that where uh, gimbals are not going to do everything that a steady cam can do, and a steady cam can't do everything that a gimbal can do. I think it's come so yep. far, and early on, maybe some of the bigger issues were you're trying to haul it around and you're trying to run bigger cameras and the batteries can't keep up and the tech would have so many issues where a lot of the times I feel like on bigger sets, you're relying on speediness and, and the professionalism of being able to get a camera up and running. And when all of a sudden a gimbal's going down and you're having to figure out why it went down because it's brand new tech, you're killing time that you could have been shooting and, and that becomes an issue. So I'm sure there yeah. are so many ways that people have balanced it. But I feel like what I've noticed, yeah. even on bigger sets, is that there's this the way it floats through air 
is just different and cannot hit the same as a steady cam, in my opinion. Like if a camera's moving in and pushing over, I see this up and down. I know I'm using my hands for anyone who's listening to this, I'm sorry. But like you, you yeah, have yeah, this yeah. bobbling <laughs> thing that happens, you know what I mean? And and you just don't see that with steady cam. It's, yeah, it's it's this. Yeah. It drives it's me nuts. And that, that comes from the it's the it's the footsteps. Mm-hmm. And you you have and in steady cam you isolate your hips. Um and you can do sort of the same thing with the gimbal, but also just like where you're holding the gimbal and then the camera wants to, you know, is 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 uh, positioned down from where your hands are, approximately where your hands are. This is eye level. Right. This is really hard for your arms to hold for a long time. Your arms are more comfortable resting your elbows against your body because then you have more support. Right. But then the, the angle is always looking up at talent, like up at the chin. Yeah. Uh, instead of you know being eye level or slightly above for the view shot. With you with the steady cam, how long do you feel like you can run in a singular take if needed uh, before you really start feeling the wear and tear? Well, um, I've done several takes that have been over an hour, one oh, take without Jesus breaking frame. Jesus Christ! God <laughs> damn. Um, and I've done I've done multiple concerts. I did a Diddy concert at the Forum a few years back where. The total length of the program from beginning to end was about f- almost four hours. And I only broke frame to change battery and media. And even then, I still held it on my body for most of those. Uh, so, we, so we could just like get in and, you know, get it changed and get back out and not lose the picture. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I, yeah, envy you because I, I doing it for Coachella, I, we ended up having um alexa mini on the on the m15 and i had it hooked up to a backpack to be able to send a wire signal and i'm running i i feel like i never set it down and my bat like i felt my muscles change shape like they had to like bend my back from rehearsals because it's just and i same thing you don't want to shoot low and at the top like if you're shooting someone like beyonce i'm i'm trying to get eye level so i'm really doing this shit because i'm not a swole boy man i don't hit the gym as often as i wish i did <laughs> so it's it's, it's extremely difficult the gimbal, the gimbal is gym. <laughs> that is, is facts i did feel much better after after i finished that Thanks for listening to this clip. Make sure to listen to the full interview, which is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Hit the subscribe button for more highlights and join our Black Window Cream private community for creators. Links in the description.